Hey folks, welcome back to the Metal Mill 52 workshop. My name is Bill, this is my shop. We're working on an LBSC Titch locomotive. Here's the book for it. And um, here's what the chassis looks like so far. Coming along. Goal is to get it running on air sometime soon. Here's the pistons or cylinders, steam chests, and uh, associated equipment. And this, uh, this episode, this last two weeks, I've been making the the guide bars and the crossheads and the crosshead pins and the little custom made nuts that hold it all together. This is what it looks like taken apart. So tiny little things but a lot of work that went into them. So yeah, I, I do discuss each step and show you the setups and hopefully that's helpful to you or at least interesting if you're not building one of these. It, to me, it's fascinating all the tiny little parts that go in here and all the, all the work that goes into building one. So I hope it's interesting to you. Please do give me a thumbs up just uh, if you don't feel like making a, a comment or asking a question. The thumbs up always encourages me, lets me know people are out there. So I do appreciate that. Um, if you have a question, please ask and I'll do my best to answer for you. And I hope you sit back, relax, and enjoy. And... Um, Enjoy this this uh, this episode this week. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you soon. All right, here I am making the crosshead, and I don't know if you can see that very well or not. But I started out with a piece of the stock that I got from McMaster Car, and I squared it. I cut it off an inch and a half length. I squared the ed edges, which will help with future machining operations. Then I've used an eighth inch end mill to make an eighth inch wide slot in it. And the main reason I did that, then I'll, I'll widen it out by moving the, the Y axis of the mill in order to, about 10 thou either way to get it out to the, um, the correct width, actually a little bit more than about, about 15 thou because it's gotta be 3 16 So the reason I did that, let me show you this. I did a test cut on a piece of, a different piece of 3 16 inch scrap or sorry, 5 16 inch scrap steel. And it's kind of hard to tell from the picture. I made a nice cut. I, I did a test cut with a four flute, 3 16 inch wide end mill. It got a beautiful slot there, but it's a little bit offset. The one, one side is about 10 thou thicker than the other, which it's not uncommon. And interestingly enough, Blondie Hacks just did a whole video on cutting slots in the mill. And this is the recommended technique is, and it's frustrating because you know you could just do it with one cutter and get the right width. But if you want to get it on center, it's better to use a, an undersized end mill and then widen out your slot appropriately. So that's what I'll be doing next. This was worth the effort. There was a lot of going back and forth with the eighth inch end mill, but I've got each side is slightly under 1 16th of an inch, so it gives just enough sliding room. Let me show you. Here's the piece of steel that will become the guide bars. It lays in there real nice. I actually went ahead. It doesn't look like it's deep enough, but I did adjust the depth of cut an extra thou so that the bar sits just underneath the uh, or right flush with the top. There'll be a piece of steel solder soldered on top here to make the top of the channel. So I think we're in good shape there. Thought I'd jump into the next phase by making the little bolts for the crosshead. This is 3 8 inch 12L14 steel. And here's the finished one that I've cut off. I'll have to obviously finish the end of it. But as you can see, I've got the 5C collet chuck here. This little shoulder is 3 16 of an inch in diameter where I've got my thumb and forefinger here. So I'll be able to hold it in a uh, 3 16 inch collet to uh, have the head out and cut and uh, clean that up. But here's the blank basically. Turned it down to the 5 32nd diameter and 3 16 inch diameter as the book calls for. Now I'm just I've checked it with my micrometer and I'll use the uh, tailstock die holder to put the threads in. Okay, I've got it threaded. Now I'm cutting it off with 1 16th of an inch thick head there. Just about cut off. Going slow, 70 RPM, just very slowly advancing the feed I'm using plenty of lube. 
use the tap paste stuff for these slow speed operations. It's pretty gooey and seems to work really well. Should be just about done. Not sure if these pieces are going to need to be case hardened, but I can do that if I need to. I have to double check that in the book. It would make sense. We've got case hardening compound. We'll just heat them up cherry red. Matter of fact, that's the name of the compound. It's called cherry red. Heat it up, bury it in the compound, pull it out, heat it up again. Same thing. There we go. Alright. And now I'll put a put them in a 316 inch 5C call it and flip them around so I can clean the heads up. Okay, here's how the uh, little bolts, the crosshead pin bolts came out. Really happy with them. Let me show you there. They'll clean up even nicer than that. I haven't even wire wheeled the threads or anything, but came out very, very nice. Really happy um, with those. So now it's time to make a couple of nuts. I've got the quarter inch hex steel, and this is some good easy machining steel as well. So I'm setting up, I'll, I'll just face off the end so that I have a nice flat end to work with. You always want to have that for a nut, obviously. Center drill it, and with the uh, drilling tailstock here, do a number 30 drill. I've got that all set out, ready to go. And my 532nd 40 tap, got that all lined up. So it'd be a simple process. I'll do the drilling and tapping for all of it all at once. Go about a half inch deep and with a 30 drill and then the uh, tap that portion and then slice off a couple of one uh, some 532nd inch thick nuts so um, 0.156 inch this is about a half inch I'm going to go a little bit deeper the lathe is a about 360 RPM, which is good. It's fast for drilling, slow for everything else. There's about 6 thou right there, or 600 thou. That should be plenty. And we'll stop this and get ready to tap it. And for tapping, I use a combination of hand and power tapping. What I'll do is touch the inching button here. This It's nice this lathe has an inching button. So I'll inch it a little bit and then uh, re remove it by hand or put it in reverse. It has a reverse gear also. But I try to take it easy because I only have one tap like this and they're from Great Britain and they're kind of scarce. So I certainly do not want to break this tap. You never want to break a tap. You definitely don't want to break off a rare one like a 532nd by 40 inch tap in your work. That would be bad. So taking it easy, nice and slow, doing it by hand so I can feel uh, where the tap is and how much resistance it's got. Okay, now it's time to make the guide bars. This is the eighth inch by three quarter three sixteenths inch steel that was part of my McMaster car order. This is actually tool steel and it is beautiful stuff. It was a couple of dollars for this and I almost took a chunk of hot rolled steel and machined it down but I'm so glad I didn't uh, so glad I bought this tool steel. So I cut them off a little bit over two and three quarter inches about about twenty five thou extra about seven two point seven seven five and um so i've got them the edges square i mark this try to mark the center on there but it's not really good so what i've been doing here is using my little uh, half thou in a rapid indicator and i've just got this dialed in it took quite a while i'm not great with the four jaw i used to use a four jaw chuck all the time before i had a 5c call it chuck because four jaws are great and you can be super accurate with them but it took me a little while, but I just, I, I dialed in the, you know, it's a, obviously not a square. So I dialed in first the flats, cause that was pretty easy and got them even. And then I dialed in the, the skinny parts, the eighth inch wide 
portions. So I just got that done and it's dialed in perfect now. I don't want to, since I'm shooting with the iPhone, I don't want to flip it around, but um, got it in just right. So now I need to turn the, the end of the bar, the first um, 3 16 of the bar, down to an eighth inch diameter, and then I can thread it 540 to go in the rear cylinder covers. Okay, I switched over a carbide cutter for the final cuts because the uh, high speed steel was giving me a little bit of raggy result. And here is, I always like for perfect accuracy, I like to use the calipers. So here is the, that's kind of snug on there. Oh, shoot. It's hard to do this while you're videoing without a video stand. Maybe I'll get one someday. I might have got one, but all right. So let me lock it, take it off. Just wanted to show you. We're a half thou under 125 thousand. So that's perfect for an eighth inch. Well, let me bump it for you. Oh, before I do that, let me show you the three quarter inch. Three, three quarter, three sixteenths inch. I use the DRO, but it's always nice to kind of cross check, make sure the shoulder is three sixteenths. So, looks like it. Looks like it real good. Here's the bump it around. And once the nice thing is, once you've got something centered in your fore jaw like this, an odd shaped or sized part, it's relatively easy to get the second one done. So I'll thread this. And put the second one in, turn it down, and make the second one. All right, sweet. Here's the second one made. This is a lot easier than I thought it would be. I was not looking forward to this process, but um, thankfully that little inner rapid centering gauge or indicator that I have really helps. So there's a there's the finished product with a 540 nut on the end and let me take that out so it doesn't go flying when I use it again. As you can see I'm using this four jaw that goes into the 5C holder and it's very handy for to, it's, it's a great way to convert a, a big lathe to a little lathe just simply put. Alright so there's the nut here's the finished product. I got a little carried away I was filing the shoulder there and the file jumped out and I put a couple of scratch marks in the guide bar, which is not good. So I'm going to polish those out, certainly, before I pack it in tonight. But that's pretty good. Pretty good day's work. The only other thing that will, when, when the uh, locomotive, as I, well, the, the book talks about screwing these into to the rear cylinder covers and then marking the position un, and the underside of these and marking the place where the hole will need to get drilled and tapped and countersunk that will hold this into the guide bar that I made early in this series. So still a little bit more to do to these things, but we'll, we'll show you. Well, let me show you something I was hoping to make over the weekend was the, the two crossheads. And, um, cause in this chain, this video sequence, there's a elaborate series of me machining this teeny little block here cutting this 3 16 inch wide by eighth inch deep slot that the guides can ride on of course there'll be a piece silver soldered on top of there but these are the guides that i just made a few minutes ago and just to show you how tiny these blocks are this is an inch roughly inch and a half piece long piece three quarters of an inch cold drilled steel and five sixteenths inch wide or thick, whatever you want to call it. But I laid this out and I was planning to machine this over the weekend, but um, I got started on the lathe projects and while I was on the roll, I decided to go ahead and finish making the two guide bars and the two little nuts and bolts for the cross heads. So pleased with how all those came out. It's getting kind of late on Sunday night. I'll, I'll pack it in in a minute and um, just knock out pieces of this over the week. It's simple, but it's a zillion steps because a lot of things that have to get done to it. And LBSC was not that extremely specific about some of the artistic shapes and stuff that get milled into it. 
I guess that's kind of up to me. I'll show you what I mean. I found some good examples on the internet and um, like here's a shows some of the pieces that are all done except for having the top part silver soldered onto them and let's see here's some other photographs that are useful it's funny how you know they look so big in the pictures but knowing how tiny these guide bars are and the little blank is it's obviously quite small these were the photographs it's a gentleman named hang on a second, let me see if i can find his name put the camera up here i think his name is ryan norton and he published an, a build series in model engineer magazine but you can find all these pictures all the you can search for all the photos that he posted in the in the build series in the article the big difference was his version had the wall charts gear versus the simple slip eccentrics. So there's pages of examples of him building those gears, but a lot of useful stuff here that I've been very much relying on. So here's the next steps. That's what the guide bars look like and the little connecting rods that will drive the locomotive. And so cool stuff. Cool. And no surprise, I'm doing the crosshead blocks in the mill and here I've just got it, I've got it tipped up on end and I've gone a half inch from the top which is 7 16 inch from the center of the slot down and I center drilled and drilled a um, I think it's a number 32 hole it's just slightly under 532nd so that's the second one now I can just countersink that little hole and get ready to work on the face of the crosshead. Okay, about halfway through, almost halfway through the initial machining steps for the crosshead block. Got a pretty picture to show. So I did a, I laid it here, I indexed it. I used this indexer to index the left edge. And an eighth inch back, I drilled a number 49 hole, which is tapping size for 256 screws. I thought that'd be a good holder for the piston rod. Then I was supposed to drill a number 21 hole, but like an idiot, I made my hole too deep for the piston rod, so I ended up using a small end mill to make a plunge cut because you can't drill where some of the material is missing. It, it, it makes your drill go offset. So uh, I used the, the uh, small end mill to make a plunge cut, and then I followed that with a number 21 drill. And now I'm using a 3 8 inch end mill to do the pin wheeling or whatever the heck uh, LBSC called pin milling. Um, basically just making a flat bottom hole. You could do this with a uh, flat bottom drill as well. But I'm using a 3 8 inch end mill go down 218 thou to make the hole for the piston rod. And then I'll have to mill away excess material, but I'll do that tomorrow night. All right, here we go. It's uh, Tuesday night now. And I just finished m machining these little, really, I can't figure out that they do any purpose, these little decorative slots in the front part of the, of the pieces. What I did was a 3 16 inch end mill, and I, I centered it in between the bottom of the top hole and the piston rod hole there. So I did both sides, and I just did it 3 16 of an inch deep on either side. Seems to look pretty good, pretty much like uh, Ryan Norton's pictures from his, his uh, model engineering magazine. One thing I'm not going to do, what you're looking at here, is both of the inside pieces, but um, the way the, if I was using the Walsh Arts gear, I would need to flip it over like a pancake and mill, out, mill off a little bit of the outside face of it because there's a uh, an ear that gets silver soldered in place that helps as part of the the wall shorts ear. Since I'm not doing that, I don't need to mill the other face off. And I think, in the interest of keeping as much weight as I can on the on the thing, I'll just leave it like that. The next thing I need to do is take the part out and then carefully mill out some of the bottom for um, to make space for the piston rods. And I'm not sure if I'm going to cut it in half first before I do that or try to do some of it while it's still at one piece. I'm going to take it out and study it a little Here's bit. Here's the part I'm getting ready to lay out. I've cleaned it and deburred it a little bit, but 
listen to what the directions say are next. Trim off, well it says cut the cut the part in two uh, to the two 5 8 inch wide slices essentially. Then trim off the outer end of each. Level with a pin drill recess, semicolon, see back view. The part into which the piston rod fits can be rounded off if you wish, but it isn't essential. <laughs> so that's, if you'll bear with me a second, I'm going to lay out what I think that I need to do next here for you. Just thought I'd show this before I'm, I start marking it up, because it did come out nice and clean, and it's a good looking part. And I want to be really careful here, because I don't want to mess it up. Alright, there we go. See the outer edge, which is this side, would be machined down like a 32nd of an inch from 3 16th inch down if I was if it had wall shirts valve gear, but I don't have that. Alright, so I'm gonna mark out the cut lines and then the parts to mill away here, I think. Alright, here I've laid out the two 5 8 inch cut lines, which will take it right to the back of the 3 8 inch circle, which seems to conform to the plans. Also marked off the bottom, some of which, some of this bottom material will get milled away, judging from these pictures from Ryan Horton's article, Ryan Norton's article in Model Engineering Magazine. You can see this, they, uh, they mill off this area here, and there's still enough. They round this. The book doesn't say that this needs to be rounded, but mill this off for clearance, it looks like, from the piston rod. So... First thing, before I cut it in half, I think what I'm going to do is tip it up in the mill and just mill off this small portion here, like a sixteenth of an inch deep, up to the edge of the, the circle on both sides. And then at least that much will be done. And I can take it out of the mill, cut it in two, and the only part that I'll just have to mill away some of this, the thickness that goes down to the, um, down to the 218 thou. Um, thickness depth if you will if that makes any sense and I can just round off the remaining portion so uh, let's uh, mill these parts out. okay there's the part with the um, leading edge bottoms milled away down about a sixteenth of an inch and just shy of the circle you can see it pretty good that way now I'm gonna try to mill down basically the web in the middle that's got to get removed or either, you know, sawn out. Anyway, I thought it would be easier to do it while it's still in one piece. So I'll go down 218 thou, down to the bottom of the hole, and uh, mill away all but the uh, remaining 16th. Okay, so far so good with milling out that recess. And you can see I do have some strength. Obviously there's plenty of strength in the top part of the, the piece in the, in the vise. There's a limited amount of strength here across the back. Of course, this back is is solid, so it's not going to collapse or anything. But I think I'm gonna. It's my quitting time for the night, so I'm gonna stop, and I may come back and just use the same setup in the mill and mill this bridge down. So the 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 goal is it needs to get down. This whole area needs to get milled down flat to the same. De uh, depth as the bottom of the hole there, the space that you see. And then, of course, it needs to be cut in two pieces. So we'll see. I'm going to let it sit tonight and percolate in my brain. And the, the, the other choice would be to take it out and go ahead and cut it in half now and then trim these pieces down separately. But I'm not sure that would be any added value. I might. What I might do is I've got the quarter-inch cutter in there right now end mill. I, I could use a smaller end mill just for a little less uh, brute force on the metal. So we'll think about that and come back tomorrow and tackle this. This should be the last cut or the next to last cut. I decided to mill the back portion off with the uh, part in place and the vise like this. Yeah, I'll probably have to take off like two more thou. I won't film that because I'm trying to be really exact and real gentle, but so far so good. We'll, uh, we'll make one more pass, just get that, that rid of that little lip at the bottom, make it perfectly flush, and then I can take it out and saw it in half. 
Okay, got the machine shut off and the loud rotary phase converter. Loosened it up a little bit and let's see, not bad. I think it's going to, first of all, I'm really thrilled that I didn't catch the part and fly it across the room and bend it and break it like I've done with some other stuff recently. So, looking good. You can see the vertical lines here towards the center. Those will be the cut lines that I'll cut. And I noticed some of these have more like little decorative milling in the back. I'm not sure I'm going to get into all that um, back side of them. But in fact, it's kind of late now. I had a work commitment tonight, so I just had time to come out and mill this off. So I'll uh, cut that in half very carefully. And then we'll finish those up. And we still have to, even when all this is said and done, there'll be some polishing, grinding, cleaning, deburring, even after the sawing. And then the silver soldering of the top pieces in place. So still quite a ways to go, but at least we're about three quarters complete with this part. And I'm pretty, pretty happy that it's gone this well so far. There you go. Okay, here we go with the crosshead. And I've milled out the excess portions and I just milled off the excess on the bottom and I've laid out a couple of fresh cut lines that are closer together. They're, uh, they're 1 16th of an inch wider than the actual piece is. So what I'm getting ready to do now is to, I think I'm just going to use a hacksaw to cut this into two pieces and then I can mill the upper more solid portion to the correct width and I'll leave the, the thin portion down here wider so that it'll make a little bit larger of a semicircle to hold the rod in, if that makes sense. And while I'm, the reason I'm sitting over here, here's my Allen Mogul, and there is the, cup, the, the coupler. This is the crosshead for the, and you can see there's the, the cylinder, the steam chest, steam chest valve assembly, piston rod bolts and it so it bolts to the the um the crosshead and the purpose of the crosshead is to convert the linear back and forth motion and transmit it to this driving rod uh, connecting rod here so that's a pretty good example of what we're working on here except <laughs> you can see the scale this is half the size in each dimension because it's a smaller locomotive. But we'll cut this in half and then machine the, or mill the upper part. And then I think I'm just gonna grind the round portion to the bottom. And that should be pretty much it for these pieces, except for cutting the 1 16th inch flat and silver soldering it to the top. I hope to accomplish that tonight as well. Okay, here's the nice two little pieces after slicing them in half with a hacksaw. Carefully and slowly like I've done other things. Put it in the vise and I laid the hacksaw blade flat against the top of the vise. So now I'm just going to mill off that little bit where the blue is to get it down to 5 8 overall. I don't know if it's critical dimension or not, but since that's what LBSC called for, I'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to leave the bottom a little bit larger and grind that to a round shape on both of them. Right, here's the part separated and cleaned and milled to the exact 5 8 inch width and you can see the little line I've made there. Here, let me show you how I did that. I have a 3 8 inch exact almost like a gauge rod. I think it's just a piece of drill rod but it fits perfectly in the little 3 8 inch hole. So I stuck it in there and I used my scribing tool and instead of normal practice where you would incline the point of the scribing tool closest to the base. I went ahead and made a little margin to create a little little bit of a gap here. Let me see if I can pull this out. It's a snug fit. I don't know if I can do it. There we go. So you can see the, the mark and now I can take it over to, I'll put some hearing protection and breathing protection on it. Take it over to the belt sander and grind that nice little pretty radius there. And then there'll just be a little cleanup, little filing there to do for the, make some space for the actual piston rods. But pretty happy so far. Let's grind them to shape and see what we come up with. Okay, here's the 
rounded part off, fresh off the belt sander and I touched it with a little, got a delicate little file. I need to get a file handle for it, but got it cleaned up just a little bit. Here's the other one. So you can see I've made opposite ones. <laughs> That's always a critical consideration when you're needing to make opposite ones. I'm pretty pleased with how they've come out. And the, so the actual rod, the driven rod or coupling rod will sit right in here. So I may need to relieve these areas a little bit more to give it uh, room to move, but that would be an easy thing to do. So, all right, off to cut some 1 16th inch steel and silver solder it on top, the top part here. And rather than use up a pristine sheet of 16th inch steel, I have some of these pieces left over from when I made the tender for my locomotive. And this is a piece. And I just marked it out. What I did, I went 3 8 of an inch wide. So it's a little wider than the 5 16th inch material. And each of these blanks will be 3 quarters of an inch long. So obviously a little bit longer and the 5 8 inch wide blank. So give a little bit of margin. I'll cut that on, on the bandsaw, clean up the steel on the belt sander so it's nice and clean and pristine with no surface rust left on it. And we'll get ready to silver solder them together. Okay, here we go with the little pieces cut out. And I've cleaned them up on the belt sander. I'm gonna rinse them with acetone as well before we put the flux on and Get ready to silver solder. I'll, I'll, I will also set up my little portable hearth using my fire bricks to make this process a lot easier. Alright, here we go. My little makeshift hearth set up on the workbench with these excellent fire bricks that I got from Ace Hardware. Got my little propane torch all ready to go, so let's heat them up and see if we can make some magic happen there. Well, one nice thing about working with small parts is that they heat up quickly, especially nice little clean pieces of steel like this. So they've heated up and got a nice bead of silver solder down there on the parts. I heated them. Whoa, sorry about the camera. Okay. So I'm going to let these cool naturally for a while. Dunk them in water, file them and belt sand them down and make sure that I got a good a good bond and if it's satisfactory then I'll take a file and go through and make sure that I you know, re relieve any of the solder that got to the inside there we'll file that out so that we have a nice smooth path for the guide bars okay well we've got the little crossheads connecting rods locking pins and nuts Everything's made, and it's funny it's taken so long to make that tiny little thing, but pretty pleased with how it's come out. And um, I, after I finished silver soldering, then I belt sanded to get it close and then used a succession of files to get it smooth on the outside and the inside as well so that the guide bars have a good sliding fit. Um, anyway, so this is what it looks like without the pin in place. Pleased with how that came out. You can see it's still a little dirty from the heat of the torch. I'll be soaking these in WD-40 tonight and um, starting on the piston rods tomorrow. The connecting rods rather. So there's the, the next set of pieces and um, hope you've enjoyed this episode. Uh, it's been fun and I enjoy everybody being along. If you have any questions please ask. If you don't mind give me a thumbs up. Just let me know that people are out there watching. It's always enjoyable and rewarding to know that, that, uh, that you have an audience. So next thing we'll be working on are the connecting rods that connect from the, the actual back of the piston and go in here. And that should be a fun project as well. So stay tuned and we'll keep bringing it to you. Thanks everybody.